it's the 1957 German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring, the world's greatest circuit. Another race for the world's greatest driver, Juan Manuel Fangio. Fangio's already won the Argentinian, the French and the Monaco Grand Prix. He's already won four world championships for Alfa Romeo, for Mercedes and for Ferrari. Now he's out to win his fifth world championship in a Maserati. And on the first lap, it's number eight, Mike Hawthorne, in the lead in the Ferrari. Close behind him, number seven, his teammate, Peter Collins. There they go. And behind them in third position, number one, Fangio in the Maserati. The race is well and truly on. Two Ferraris and a Maserati. There are the three bad boys. Sterling Moss, Lewis Evans, Tony Brooks. Three of the world's greatest drivers way out in front. Hawthorne. Collins, the two Ferraris. Where is Fangio in the Maserati? There he is. Drifting beautifully, pressing on, catching up the two Ferraris into the carousel. Number eight, Mike Hawthorne in the V8. Behind him, number seven, Peter Collins, his English teammate. There is the Argentinian, Fangio. And now is the eighth Berra, Jean Berra in fourth position. In the Ferrari in fifth position, number six, Luigi Musso. Behind him, Harry Shell in another Maserati. So it's Ferrari and Maserati. There's the first bad wall. There is Sterling Moss in his bad wall. Stuart Lewis Evans in his bad wall. And now, across the line to start lap three. Nine minutes, 37.9 for the leader, Hawthorne. But Fangio there is catching up. He's lapping quicker. And then, they go. It's Fangio. Look at him. Ice cold, remorseless, pressing on. There go the Ferraris. And now, it's the start of another lap. And Hawthorne has just gone round in 9 minutes 37.9, but Fangio is gaining. And there is Fangio, he's gone round in 9 minutes 34.6. Peter Collins in the Ferrari, but Fangio has taken 3 seconds off Mike Hawthorne's lead in the Ferrari. The race is developing as we expected. The two Ferraris and the Maserati fighting it out for the lead in this German Grand Prix. Fangio gaining now on Hawthorne. Is he going to be able to get past him? Is he going to be able to get past Peter Collins? There is Fangio. Hawthorne in the lead still. And on go the two Ferraris. Fangio behind them. It's Ferrari, Ferrari, Maserati. And there are the Van Walls, still in team formation. Sterling Moss, number 10. And there is Fangio, round the carousel. Lapping faster than Mike Hawthorne, and he's in the lead. Fangio has taken the lead. It's Hawthorne in second place. It's Peter Collins in third position. And here is Fangio in the Maserati. Hawthorne behind him in second place. And Peter Collins, number seven, in third position. Stuart Lewis Evans starting to close up. There is Fangio on his way. Now, is he going to be able to pull away from the two Ferraris? Is he going to be able to consolidate his lead? Number eight, Hawthorne, in second place. Hawthorne knows now that if he doesn't really press on, Fangio is going to take the German Grand Prix and be well on his way to his fifth world championship. And no wonder, because Fangio is driving as he has never driven before. Look at him, at his inspired best. He just smashed the lap record, 9 minutes, 28.5. He's pulling away from Hawthorne and Collins at some 7 seconds a lap. And try as they may, the Ferraris can't keep up with the flying old fox in his Maserati. On, on then, on lap 12. Over half the race distance completed now. And it looks to me as though Fangio... Something's happened. The crowd in the grandstand has seen something sensational. They're looking across the circuit. So is Madame Fangio. And there is the sensation. Fangio is coming into the pits at the end of lap 12. Totally unexpectedly. Is he in trouble? Is it fuel? No, it's not. It's tyres. Bertocchi, the Maserati race chief, is supervising a tyre change. These Maseratis are getting old, they're heavy, they're very demanding on tyres, and it looks to me as though Fangio is going to lose the race lead to Hawthorne and Collins unless those new tyres go on very quickly indeed. And he has lost the lead. Through go Collins and Hawthorne, the two Ferraris lead, and still the pit stop is on. And just look at Fangio, calmly and implacably putting on new goggles as he sets off to do another 10 laps around this incredibly demanding Nürburgring circuit. 
And he is 45 seconds down on the two flying Ferraris as he goes off with 10 laps to go. And all the time, Banjo has been breaking the lap record. Now he's got to go faster and faster to close up the gap on the Ferraris, let alone take them. Can Fangio win his fifth world championship by winning the German Grand Prix? Hawthorne leads in the Ferrari. Collins behind him in second place. What is the gap between the two Ferraris and the Maserati of Juan Manuel Fangio? There's the gap. There is Fangio in third position. He's got 270 brake horsepower under his foot and he's going to need every one of them to close up the gap on the Ferraris. Look at the crowd at the Nürburgring. They're seeing the race of their lifetime as Fangio is now starting to close up. And here's another sensation. Into the pits comes Fangio's teammate, Harry Shell in the Maserati. And now we see the Maserati team plan. It was obvious now that Fangio's pit stop was pre-planned. He started off the race on a half-empty tank and new tyres. He finished up that fuel. He's come in. He's restarted the race on another half-empty tank, but new tyres. And now he can close up on those two Ferraris. There's Hawthorne still in the lead. Behind him, Peter Collins. They're driving a team race. And it's Fangio. Fangio is moving up through the field now. Just watch the style of this Argentinian who has dominated motor racing now for six years. And he's still dominating it because Fangio has broken the lap record every lap since he started off after his pit stop and he's gaining every inch of the way on the two flying Ferraris in front of him. Lap 17, and Sterling Moss once said, Fangio can pull back from an absolutely hopeless position. He's doing just that, because now, in the Maserati, Fangio is only 25 seconds behind Hawthorne and Collins. It's another Fangio lap record, 9 minutes, 25.3 seconds. The two Ferraris, and Fangio's gained another 20 seconds on them. Not only 20 seconds, but he's gained 45 seconds in the last eight laps, and that's an incredible achievement, even for Fangio. Look at the form of Fangio, Hawthorne, Collins, and Fangio's right with the two Ferraris. Into the closing stages of this 22-lap race, German Grand Prix. Into lap 20, two laps to go. And Fangio's broken the lap record yet again. Nine minutes, 17 seconds. But Mike Crawford and Peter Collins are pushing too. And Fangio's right with them, right in the slipstream of the two Ferraris. Coming up from the North Bend and Fangio's challenging. Challenging for second, and he takes Peter Collins. Fangio's up into second position right behind Mike Hawthorne. And there's still a full lap to go at the end of this one. The Ferrari leads the Maserati, leads the Ferrari, Mike Hawthorne, Fangio. And now Fangio is going to challenge Mike Hawthorne for the lead. And he leads. Juan Manuel Fangio is in the lead on the last lap of the German Grand Prix. On his way to his fourth Grand Prix of 19. On his way to his fifth world championship. World champion in 1951. World champion in 1954, 55 and 56. A glorious race for a wonderful world champion. And Fangio takes the checkered flag to win the German Grand Prix. At a record average speed, faster than his own previous lap record. It's been Fangio's day, Fangio's year. Surely the greatest driver in the history of motor racing. There's never been anyone like Fangio. Supreme in his time, and surely supreme for all time. Fangio, 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 Fangio.